Hey there, my name's Alex and these are my beehives. I've been a beekeeper now for two and a half years. This will be my third year of beekeeping and it has been such a big learning curve but also a very rewarding one. The feeling of harvesting your own honey at the end of the season is just the best thing ever and I'm going to be documenting another year of beekeeping. I started beekeeping back in 2021 and on that first year I really didn't have a clue what I was doing. I got stung loads, my bees swarmed, but despite this I still managed to harvest 12 kilograms of honey which I was so so pleased about. Year 2 was slightly different, I knew more of what to expect, I managed the bees much better and I harvested 68 kilograms of honey which I sold in an honesty box outside my old house. Now things have changed quite a bit over the past few months. At the end of last year I actually moved house from the southeast of England to the west country in the city of Bristol. I managed to move my bees onto this little piece of land where some very kind people let me keep them and this year the aim is to make even more honey. I'd really like to have a little market stall at one of the Bristol markets this year to sell my honey at so that is the aim for this season. Anyway, the winter really has been dragging on a bit, but I've been trying to get on with a few important tasks. So let's rewind back to the beginning of this year so you can see what I've been up to. It's not cold out there, it's just really kind of, well at the moment it's stopped raining, but it's been so wet. But quite mild conditions, which is kind of not great for the bees, because when the weather is warm, it means the bees are active. But at this time of year, there's no, there's not really many flowers for them to collect pollen and nectar from. So they end up going through the stores in their hive pretty quick, which means I need to keep an eye on their food levels. And today I'm going over for my weekly check to maybe top up the food and just check that everything's been okay. There's been a couple of storms recently, so I hope that uh, the hives are still upright. I can actually see they're quite active today and it's because it's so mild, it's like 13, 14 degrees in January, it's meant to be cold now but it's so mild. I can see the bees down there, there's, there's still a colony of bees. Now what's worrying is I don't know if the queen's okay, it's quite hard to tell, you can't open up the hive really at this time of year and have a look. But I can see that there are bees and they are eating away at the sugar, they still got probably another week or two of food on there, which is good. So I don't need to do anything with this one. On this hive I've got a two and a half kilogram bag of fondant sugar, and you can see where they've eaten a hole through the sugar. I can also just lift up the back of the hive, and I can feel that there's still quite a bit of weight there. So they have got, I think, enough food to last them through the spring in this hive. But then this one, this is a small colony, and I have a feeling this one will need some more food. I'm also worried because there might be bees in the top here, so when I open it they might. They've actually got enough food. This hive is so light. Like, they don't have much food stored in the hive, but they have enough of the sugar to eat at least. I made this little bench out of scrap wood, so I've got it to sit on and watch the bees my bee watching bench. Look at this, this must be the first bit of sun we've had in weeks. Climate change, eh? I just hope that my bees survive another few months until the spring and then we can get on with the beekeeping season, look after these hives, hopefully they thrive and we get a big honey harvest because this year we're aiming for more bees, more honey, more wax, more candles, more of everything. I just want more. <laughs> that's, the, that's the plan. Hey pigs! Until the beekeeping season really gets started in March and April, I'm going to be doing maybe a weekly or fortnightly check just to make sure they've got enough food to get them through the last of the winter. Over the next few weeks, I'm also going to attempt to make some 
beehive parts because beehives and beekeeping equipment is quite expensive like if you make if you buy ready made stuff uh, so i thought i'd go to the shop and buy some wood and use my limited woodwork skills to see if i can make some of the beekeeping equipment that i need for this year just to try and save some money and also to try and pass some time because this part of the year is really uninspiring and there's not a great deal to do next time i see you will probably be in my back garden making some things out of wood i have got so much wood in my room i uh, i went to the wood shop today and uh, bought a load of ply sheets and they actually cut the pieces in the store so most of these pieces of wood are cut to size already or maybe half of them uh, which saves so much work because i don't really have many tools and space to do all the cutting of large sheets of ply but the main job i have to do is measuring things accurately and then sticking the pieces of wood together to create the beehives beehives have to be really accurate you can't just um, make any old sized box they need to have specific dimensions so that the uh, bees can live happily and so that they don't um, create comb where you don't want them. There's something called a bee space, actually. Um, it's between, I think, four, five millimeters and eight or nine millimeters. It's a specific size, which you can't have any gaps in the hive bigger than that. Otherwise, the bees will fill it with comb, like uh, beeswax which makes the job as a beekeeper hard because then the, the hive is like clogged up with comb where you don't want it. But if there's a space in the hive which is smaller than a bee space, smaller than that specific measurement, uh, then the bees will fill it up with propolis, which can also be a problem because if you have a, a very small gap in something, the bees then fill it with this sticky propolis stuff uh, which glues it shut basically. Anyway, on the next day where it's not pouring with rain outside and horrible weather, I'm going to go in the garden and uh, do a bit of cutting, do a bit of gluing and screwing so that we have uh, some new bee boxes. Now even though I'm not very good at making things out of wood, especially not accurate things, um, I've realised that some parts of a beehive are pretty easy to make, or at least I think they are. Because this here, this is a crown board, it's a lid which goes on the top of every single beehive. It has a couple of holes in for like feed holes. Uh, in the winter when you want to feed them, you can put food on top so the bees can come through. And then these holes are also used with these things. These are um, like bee escape mechanisms. So it's like a one-way system for bees. And when you're harvesting the honey, you put these in to get the bees out of the supers where the honey is. Anyway, these crown boards are very useful. You need them in every beehive. It's just a square of plywood and then uh, four strips of strip wood around the outside. This is one that I bought, uh, but this has been nailed on or stapled on. I got myself a staple gun thing, so shouldn't be too tricky to make. I think one of these would cost you 20, 30 pounds. I should be able to make like five of them for the same price, so that's pretty cool. Well, that's just ridiculous. Within seconds of picking up my staple gun, I managed to break it. I think I loaded the staples in the wrong way and then a bit of metal bent out of place. So I've been in a very bad mood for the last five minutes, thinking that I need to go to the shop and get a new staple gun. But don't need to because I got a screwdriver and a hammer. So we're gonna figure this out another way. Well, I managed to find enough nails to hit into this board. That's basically what we're going for. Still got to make a hole in the middle of this, but I'm also gonna go to the shop and get another staple gun, because it'll be way quicker to just go than like hitting the nails in. What a disaster. Look what I got, a new staple gun. And this one, I managed to not break within the first five minutes.
Ta da! There we go, we have a crown board for a beehive. Now I'm gonna make another four of them. There, it stopped. It started raining, and then I had to go back inside because all my tools were getting wet, and all the wood was getting wet. So I thought I'd come back out here today. Everything was nice and dry until I got all my tools out here, and now it's raining. So annoying. Hmm. I'm just gonna go for it and hope it doesn't rain too much. we have about 150 quids worth of beehive lids. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And they're probably about 25 pounds each if you buy them. And it didn't take long, it was quite easy to do. Good way to spend some time in the winter when you can't really do any beekeeping. Anyway, it's raining again, so I'm going to resume my beehive building on a slightly nicer day. I've started work on these nuke boxes, uh, basically a small beehive, and this is a little bit more complex than the beehive roofs. These have to be pretty accurate, so I'm actually following a design. And I watched a YouTube video of someone building a beehive the other day, and what they did first was make a little rig for it, so uh, these things hold the wood in place for, for when I can like screw them together. These slot into these gaps and now I can screw it all together and it should be easy and held in place. Well, that just happened. Oh my God, no. Oh, it's freezing cold today, but I'm trying to get the beehives built. Hmm, my housemate made me a mint tea. I now have three of these wooden boxes and to demonstrate how they work, I've got these hive frames which go inside like so. And these are meant for five frames. As you can see here, there's five frames in there. It might be able to fit a sixth one. I've got to put a bottom on them, a lid on them, and also cut out a little entrance hole in the front for the bees to come in and out of. On the base of each beehive, I cut a hole, then stapled on some mesh. This would allow the hive to have fresh airflow coming up into the hive. I then attached the base to the box with some screws. We've got the box, and then we've got the lid, and then the roof. They're nearly done. I've just got to spend one more day painting them. Once they're painted, then they will be ready. One last thing to do before painting was cut a circular hole in the hive roof. This would end up being a feed hole. And when it wasn't being used for feeding, I could pop in one of these little plugs to stop the rain getting in. It's time to do some painting. I bought this paint here, forget me not color. How nice. Um, it's kind of a nice light blue 
Uh, this is outdoor paint, it's waterproof, which will protect the wood. I need to do two layers of these, eight hours apart. So that's the hives painted. I now actually need to do the same thing all over again uh, for the second coat. I've got paint everywhere. Cleaning isn't something that I've enjoyed much throughout my life, uh, but as I get older, I definitely um, find more satisfaction in it like than I used to. And my beekeeping equipment also needs cleaning. Diseases can build up in old comb. Um, so by removing the old comb, thoroughly cleaning it off, uh, you are reducing the chances of diseases getting into the hive. Also, as a beekeeper, you want to be able to go into your hive and lift out the frames easily. You don't want it to, them to get jammed and stuck. And if you don't clean equipment, uh, the propolis and wax can build up and it can make just inspecting the hives pretty tricky. I've got a box behind me of things which need sorting. I'll, I'll show you what I need to do. So I've got a few old frames. This one, as you can see, the wax is gone. I need to clean out the last bits of wax from the edges and then I can reuse this frame. I can put a new sheet of wax in. And then these ones have been used for a season or two and the bees have actually decided for some reason to eat their way through and kind of destroy this frame. And that's not very good because this bit becomes weak um, and it can end up breaking off like that. But this wax, I'm gonna melt it down and see if we get any good wax for candles out of that. It smells nice. But with this frame, we'll take out the wax, melt it down and then clean the actual wood. Cause look, that there, that's all propolis and wax sticky stuff you see how it's like actually really accumulated at the top there and then also I've got these uh, feeders this is what I feed the sugar syrup in like in the autumn or the spring if they need extra food then I use these feeders for that and as you can see in there it's full of oh gosh dead ants mold and again bits of propolis and wax and all this equipment will be roughly cleaned off, like I think I'll try and scrub off most of the dirt. And then it will go into a boiler. This is a 30 litre boiler full of water. And also the magic ingredient is um, soda crystals. Now most things in the kitchen you can clean with just washing up liquid and water. However, the propolis and wax is super like sticky and resistant to uh, most washing up liquids and you have to use something kind of stronger and more abrasive. I didn't really believe it at first but beekeepers told me like if you want to clean your equipment use soda crystals and I was like can't I just use washing up liquid? I tried washing up liquid it did not work. Uh, soda crystals are incredible. It dissolves the propolis, dissolves the wax and you're left with very clean nice equipment. So for a 30 litre boiler I think I'm going to add one kilogram of soda crystals. This will create quite a mild solution, but this, as well as the boiling water, should do the trick. It's quite nice, actually, how beekeeping is uh, it's quite seasonal. It means that you have the winter to right, plan and prep and do things like this, clean equipment. Because if it was always like it is in the summer, which is pretty hectic, you would probably never have time for all the tasks like this. So the wires are trapped in here uh, with these nails, so I need to actually remove this bit of wood. Mm, smells quite nice actually. You see that there, that is propolis. And after being soaked, it just comes out so easily.
would you look at that? It is so clean. There was so much gunk all around the frame here. And now it is so clean, perfect, ready to be used again. So after a few hours of cleaning, I have a box full of wax, which is really good stuff. I'm going to uh, keep adding to that throughout the season and then turn this all into candles. The wooden frames and the feeders are just airing out. Once they're dry, I'll put them in a box and then into storage, ready for the season ahead of us. Uh, there's signs of spring. The bulbs that I planted in this garden a couple of months ago are starting to come up. We've got crocuses, daffodils, tulips, snowdrops, snowflakes, and some alliums. Things are slowly waking up. Um, I feel good after this day of cleaning. It's one of those jobs which you know needs to be done, but you don't really want to do it. Um, but it feels good now that it is done. Well, I have finally finished making my three little beehives. Um, it took me way longer than I expected and it would definitely have been cheaper just to buy some of these from online. Um, but I'm trying to find a positive. I feel quite satisfied and it's quite a good feeling having made these myself. Um, will I do it in the future if I can find a slightly cheaper way of making these? And also if I had maybe a workshop or a bit more space and uh, a few more tools, then I might consider doing this again. Because it was quite a lot of hassle trying to build these in my bedroom and in the little back garden. But, for now, they're finished. Inside of all these boxes are frames, um, like this, with foundation. That's just a sheet of beeswax, which then the bees will uh, draw comb out from. The function of these little beehives are for when I split one of my larger colonies. Uh, I split one of those large ones into another colony, uh, which I can put inside this little box. And then when they outgrow this little box, you can then put them in a bigger box. Um, I think I might also use one of these boxes as a bait hive. You basically place a hive like this somewhere uh, in hope that when someone else's bees swarm, they find your box and then you can basically have a free colony of bees. So I might place one of these in the back garden and then place the other one uh, near my bees where they are currently, just in, in hope that maybe I'll catch a swarm. It feels good that these are, these are finally complete. We're getting stuck in all the Bristol traffic. It's a Sunday morning. It should be quiet, but there's quite a few people about, as you can see. And also, as you may be able to tell, the camera is moving. I'm not holding it. And that's because um, my housemate Tom is helping me film today, which is cool because I've never really had someone help film. Anyway, today, the plan is to get some bees. Now, I've been posting beekeeping videos on YouTube for the past two years, and somehow they have accumulated quite a few views, which has allowed me to connect and meet up with many other beekeepers. And just recently, I got an exciting offer from an Instagram follower who asked if I wanted another colony of bees. I actually lost one of my own colonies a few months ago, so this would make up the numbers again. Okay, I'm currently trying to park my van into a field, a very muddy field. So I'll keep my front two wheels on the hard stuff. Ooh. Oh, my wheels are sliding. I think that's as far as we're gonna get. Right, we arrived in a field in the middle of nowhere and we're getting on our protective gear. Sometimes bees can be a bit angry. I always feel like a teddy bear when I put this on. Do they never go for your hands? They don't. Bees always go for, for like the face. It's really okay. odd. They really like, they know where, I don't know, they can see a, 
human face very well. Hmm, they have eyes. <laughs> the piece of eyes. Yeah, they, yeah have they, eyes. they do have eyes. You got your gloves on. Not giving me any gloves. No, you're gonna be fine, mate. Baby. You stand back, <laughs> and you'll be okay. You got some hive straps. We're gonna need these to ratchet strap the hive together so it doesn't fall apart. The bees are up there. Okay, let's go get them bees. Don't want this, don't walk down yeah. in front. This side is where the entrances are. Okay. So they go in and out. So if you stand like back here, you'll be good. Sam made this beehive. It's so amazing. But if you have a look, you can see where, you can see the bees in there. You can actually see the honey in there, in the summer. Well, you can see a bit there, look. Nice and tight, like. We don't want them escaping <laughs> in the car. <laughs> that is not what we want. Yeah, I imagine it's <laughs> going to be quite heavy. It probably is going to be, and it's going to be top heavy as well because all the honey and everything is all, it's all at the top. At the top. That's it. Oh, wow. I think we're going to go in the side door. There you go. There we go. Nice, nicely behind my seat, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've got the bees in the car. Thank Goodbye. You. Go left at the top, follow the road all the way down, and then you'll be back on the main road. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. All right. We've taken the bees hostage. They're in the back, blindfolded. Now, we just have to bring them to their new home and let them free. Right, we've got the bees in position. We've now got four lots of bees. My hives that I have currently are national hives, which is like, the size and shape of them. Like national is sort of what most people in the UK use for beehives. So everything is interchangeable. You can, like lots of beekeepers can just use national size and then everything fits. Uh, however, this is a Warre hive invented by a guy called Mr. Warre, I guess. But it's a very different sort of setup. It's a more natural way of beekeeping where you don't actually have frames which you can take out. People often use these hives um, they just leave them to it and they don't inspect them, they don't check them or manage them as much. But my aim is to get maximum honey harvest this year. So what I will do at some point uh, this spring is take all the bees and all the comb out of here and try and transport them into a national hive. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do that, but uh, it might involve using elastic bands to hold the frames, like hold the comb in place. Um, but I will show that uh, on video when I do it. But we're just having a look through these little windows. There's a lot of bees in there and looks like there's a lot of honey as well. Here goes. And there we have a new addition. So it's currently the 11th of March. Things are meant to be turning into spring. Uh, there are signs. There's all this wild garlic around the beehives. Uh, starting to grow which smells really nice and some of the trees are starting to flower uh, quite a few of the spring bulbs are coming up but it really hasn't felt like spring yet but over the next few weeks things should really start waking up and so should the bees when I see you next time I will be opening up the beehives for the first time of the year and we'll see what's going on inside. And if you want to keep up to date and see more regular updates of how the beekeeping is going, um, follow me on Instagram, uh, Alex underscore Smith 1809. Uh, I'll try and post regular Instagram stories on there so you can keep more up to date with the beekeeping. See you soon. See you bees.